Hey guys, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to make a sort of dungeon key overlay kind of thing. So, like in uh, Legend of Zelda games, it shows you how many keys you have in whichever dungeon you decide to uh, enter in. So if we go into this makeshift dungeon I made, we see up first at the top right hand corner of the screen we have zero keys. And, if we decide to exit, it goes away so it doesn't stay there. The music does, but you know, that's because I didn't really set anything else to get it get rid of the music anyway so if i open this chest dungeon key was found uh keys go up by one go up by one go up by one as they should and if we leave again it goes away and if we re-enter it keeps that there so now if we want to enter this door we use a key so now we're down to one key gonna go ahead and open this door now we have zero keys and if i go to this door try to open it well I try to walk into it it says you need a key to open this door all right so we're gonna grab another key do 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 and it opens now we can go in grab this key and I did make a lot of chests around here to kind of uh, show that keys can go up past a certain number but you can make your dungeon in a way to where your player only has up to two or three keys maximum but yeah here we go this is the last door and uh yeah, there's nothing in this room. I just made it so um, you guys could kind of see the idea I was going with. All right, guys. So the first thing you're going to have to make by yourself from any image editing program is a picture. And you can either make the whole picture. So uh, this whole picture right here is the size of my actual video game resolution, which is 1104 by 624, I believe. And uh, wherever you want your key count to be displayed just have a key symbol whatever you want to make and then put a kind of number next to it so when the player has zero keys and they're in this specific dungeon we're going to show you know this picture right here that they have zero keys if they have one key we're going to show this picture and so on and so forth i only go up to five because i don't think at least in my game i'll ever have a situation where the player has more than five keys it might be a little bit much for the player to handle that there are five things they could do at that one time instead of like one or two so it's it makes it less straightforward so there's a control switch and a control variable you'll have to create um in my in the very beginning of any game I make I make this uh, event that runs once and only once and turns on a common event and uh, resets any values I need to be reset and then shuts itself off forever one of the two things you're gonna have to make is a control variable this control variable right here I just set to uh, where is it I have set um, this this keeps track of the amount of keys the player has in any given dungeon right now this is dungeon uh, Roman numeral one if I want to make another, I'll just copy and paste it and then just change this to two. But I do not want to right now, but that is one of the variables you'll have to make. The next variable is going to be a switch. This switch basically tells the player, or tells the game rather, that they are in dungeon one. Now I guess when you run an event in the beginning of your game that resets and sets all of the variables you need, you don't really have to set anything to zero because any variable that comes into existence if not otherwise set to any number is in fact zero to begin with but I like to just have everything kind of a list of values to you know kind of remember in a way and uh, set this to parallel have itself switch itself to a so nothing is here and it just stays off forever next what we're gonna have to do is whichever dungeon we are in so this is just a small dungeon I made uh, we're gonna have to have a parallel event run uh, forever basically that says that has a control switch uh, dungeon in dungeon one on so anytime the players in this area with this event here it will tell the game that they're in dungeon one now in your database you don't have to make any items for this even though I have one here uh, it's even set to hidden I don't use any items for this because it, it's kind of more redundant than it should be where the only time you're ever going to need to know you have this item is when you're in the dungeon. I guess if you want to know you have it outside the dungeon, you can have some sort of variable shown to the player whenever they check something. But in this case, I'm not going to have the player mess with any item if they don't have to. So as I said in the beginning, I run this kind of main loop common event that runs forever throughout the game. So, for example, it could keep track of the player's X and Y coordinates if they wanted to throughout the whole game. 
but I'm not going to add that in here because this is not about that. This is about uh, whenever the player is outside the dungeon. So if in dungeon one is off, uh, erase picture and you could set uh, whichever picture you want. For this tutorial, I'll be using picture number 90 for any of the key number counter displays. All right, and another common event you're going to have to have, uh, so there's just only two in this, is in dungeon one and off. Basically what this does is it runs parallel with everything and then shuts itself off with the uh, control switch in dungeon one set to off. Now, since the player is in this dungeon or area that has an event that will always keep this switch on, this will always keep running no matter what until the player leaves then the last thing this common event is going to run is turning itself off which then goes to our main loop here if it's turned off it's going to erase the picture and not show anything at all so we don't want the number of keys to be shown outside this dungeon because it doesn't really make much sense so make sure your in dungeon one and off is uh, set to parallel and triggered by the in dungeon one and what we're going to do is have a ton of a kind of nested if statement here to where if dungeon key count, dungeon one key count is zero, we're going to show picture number 90. We're going to have it display this picture right here, which shows the key and the zero. If you can kind of see that, I don't think you can. I can kind of show it right there. It's going to show the picture with zero keys. And since the picture is the exact resolution of my in-game screen, I don't have to really change anything other than position to upper left. And then obviously don't change the scale or anything like that. And you'll be fine with that. Now in this conditional branch, we're going to create an else branch, which allows us to then display a different image if dungeon one key count is equal to one. This picture is going to show the player having a key of one instead of zero. Now in this conditional if statement, we're going to have another else that shows a different picture if the player has two keys. And then so on and so forth until we get to the max number of keys we have and we don't really have to show anything above that. And then just don't forget, you always have to shut this event off or whichever switch runs the event off at the very end so that it doesn't run when you walk outside of the dungeon. Now what you're going to have to do is create events on the map that the player gains and loses keys. Now I have chests as gaining keys and these kind of doors whoops, that make the player lose keys. So what I did to these chests was just right click, quick event creation, treasure, and then inside there I just added these variables right here. So it's going to make a chest sound, it's going to show the animation of it opening, turn itself off forever because it's now going to look like an open chest. And what it does is it increases the dungeon one key count. Uh, it adds one to it. And then it shows the player um, dungeon key was found. So uh, basically copied that a number of times. And then the doors are going to be a quick event creation door, except with the conditional branch where if the dungeon one key count is zero, we're going to show that you need a key to open this door. Else we're going to subtract one from the dungeon one key count because the player uses a key and... I guess for some odd reason the keys just disappear, but I don't know. We'll just we'll just go with that. And we're going to play a kind of key sound so it sounds like the player's using the key. Wait a little bit and make the open door sound, although this is kind of a stone door, so I guess it probably best to use some sort of, some sort of earth kind of movie sound. But anyway, then we're going to show the animation of the door opening. Then we're going to turn its self switch A on so that it's open forever. We don't want this door to spawn back as soon as we exit and come back to the dungeon because that's not how it should work. And we're gonna set this door to player the trigger's player touch so that we don't have to keep, it's kind of redundant. We don't need to hit enter at a door to know that we want to interact with the door. We just wanna run into it. I, I believe that's kind of standard for quick event creation is that it is player touch anyway. And um, I don't think I really messed with anything over here, but uh, you should have these values over here regardless. And that is kind of it for this, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.